remember this, like, yes, exercise and activity burns calories, but that's actually the least, in, in, I guess, important part of exercise. What you really want to focus on are the adaptations. Because you're changing workouts, the adaptations are going to be quite fa favorable. So you're not going to get this like real negative effect from all of a sudden not burning as many calories as you were doing before. The, the you know performance is still a muscle building based program. They're all strength and resistance training uh, type programs. So I wouldn't worry about that. The second thing to consider is, and this is a fact, the amount of volume and training and frequency and intensity that's required to get the body to build muscle is far higher than what's required to maintain. Um, in fact, the last study that I read was something like one seventh. Uh, the volume uh, was required to maintain, which is quite a bit less. So, you know, a lot yeah. of people worry about that, right? They do all this volume, they get to a particular point, they want to maintain. Like, oh my God, if I don't do this exact same thing I've been doing, um, I'm going to go backwards. That's not true. I mean, I've been training for a long time and if I want to just maintain, the amount of volume I need to keep my body where it's at is so low compared to what it took to get it where it's at. So you're in actually a really good place. And uh, I'm going to make a prediction here, uh, Sean. You're going to switch over to performance, bump your calories a little bit. You'll probably get a little leaner and build a little bit more muscle. Yeah. That's probably what's going to happen. All right, quick break. Here's the giveaway for today's episode. MAPS Suspension. One of you will get free access to MAPS Suspension. You just got to do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you and you get free access to that workout program. One more thing, we're running a sale right now. We put together a bundle called the MAPS Power Bundle. This includes MAPS Strong and MAPS Power Lift. Both would retail at $300, but the bundle right now is $79.99. That means you get both programs for that one low price of $79.99. So if you're interested or you want to learn more or you want to sign up, go to mapsmarch.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. You want big biceps? Do heavy farmer walks. What? Yeah, I know. It's the one exercise that a lot of people, actually, it's not one. There's many exercises like this, right? That a lot of people don't really know what it works, so they don't do it. Um, but the value is not just for strengthening the whole body, the tension that it creates in the arms and the mm. biceps and that isometric position, that full extended position, you your biceps will build. That's Pro what happened to me. As a byproduct. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's interesting you mentioned that because that's one of those you don't anticipate – Something like that's going to happen as a result. But I've been doing farmer walks. Uh, that was like a consistent uh, exercise that I would include. And there's always between biceps, shoulders, and upper back. Yep. It, it totally developed. Yep. CrossFit and, kids loving you right now. Huh? CrossFit kids are <laughs> loving you. Farmer right walks, do they? Of course they do. Do they? Do they? Yes. The yeah. CrossFit community? They do until they puke, probably. No, they do. Yeah, yeah they do. They do yeah. farmer walks all the time. Yeah. Well, so so and carry all kinds of different carry variations. Yeah. Now you know I've I've brought up gymnasts in the past and how like muscular biceps are from just pulling themselves up and all. And uh, I've talked about how chin ups are a great bicep exercise as well. I actually had a lot of gymnasts reach out to me and say, Sal, one of the best extra things that we do that builds our biceps. And I think I'm saying it right. Is it the Iron Cross? Mm -hmm. where they hold themselves out with the rings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They said the tension that that creates in the biceps, just that full extension, he goes, your arms grow every time you practice that. That's like one of the best bicep exercises I do. And um, of course, I believe them because they're the ones doing it. And again, similar experience with heavy farmer walks. Now, of course, you get bigger forearms from holding on to heavy weight, but when do your biceps carry that much tension for that long? Yeah, right? and in, the, in that end range kind of position yes. too, which is, I think- probably a factor that most people don't consider because you know bicep curls were always trying to yes. you know contract in in uh, flex versus like being in that same amount of tension extended absolutely I, I love this conversation because it also supports the argument that we always make about deadlifts too yes because we get all this pushback about deadlifts not being a back exercise yeah. and you know if you break down the movement of course it's a hip dominant movement right mm -hmm. it's more glutes and hamstrings than it is back right but this is an example of the 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 spine is is being held in a in a rigid position, which is basically isometrically contracting all the back muscles yep. while you lift a, a pretty heavy load. Most a, people, a load a load you wouldn't be able to row or right. do a chin up with or yeah. any other exercise. Most people are deadlifting more than they're doing any other back exercise, right. and so you are getting the the isometric uh, benefits from deadlifting in the back. And I think anybody who's been deadlifting for a long time and has seen this knows that how much deadlifting impacts well, their back. Well, a lot of people don't yeah. know this, okay? So I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit and talk about isometrics. This is a very applicable to what we're talking about. 
isometrics was a very valued form of strength training for old time strongmen, old strength athletes, and Soviet era weightlifters. And by the way, the Soviet Union during the the, the reign of the Soviet Union or when they were existed dominated weightlifting, dominated. And it wasn't because they had the best drugs. It wasn't because they were doing weird gene therapy, which a lot of people speculated back then because, the, you know, the Iron Curtain, we knew very little what they did. It was their training. And we knew this because when the Iron Curtain fell down, their coaches came to the U.S. and went to other countries and everybody else started crushing as well. And one thing that they did, among other things, there's lots of things they did, but one of them was isometric training. They saw the value in isometric training. So here's something a lot of people don't know. When you're doing an exercise, your, your body will recruit muscle fibers. As the exercise becomes more difficult, your body recruits more muscle fibers. So think of it like you have a V8 engine that has AI, and it's it, it conserves gas when it needs to, but when it needs to, it, it uses all the cylinders, right? So when you're driving and you're going slow, maybe only two cylinders turn on, you push the gas a little faster, four come on, then you goes up to six and eight when you're really maxing out the car. This is what happens to your muscles as well. One type of muscle contraction activates the most amount of muscle fibers compared to the others. And it's not concentric, which is curling up, and it's not eccentric, which would be lowering the weight down. It's isometric. Yeah. When you're pushing against an immovable object or holding something that requires all of your muscles tension just to stabilize, your body will call upon all its muscle fibers to do so. Yeah, well, because uh, if you think about that in terms of like curling something up, all you need is that initial like... Uh, push in terms of like force production and then it rides a lot on momentum uh so you don't really need a consistent like really high uh force output uh throughout the entire movement so if you are just pushing into something and it's not moving it's not moving uh, you're at your ultimate high amount of force production that you have to sustain yeah what is, and your what body's is, turning them on 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 and then it's still not moving turn all the muscle now what on. is that and why is it that is that uh, eradication is that what they call that where irradiation irradiation, irradiation, yeah, ir yeah. irradiation when you're in an isometric contraction and it's because it's not moving so then the body is going oh we're not moving this so i have to recruit more, more, all the more, more, more right yeah call all the troops versus if there is if there's movement involved the body's going oh we i I only yeah. need this much to do this. Yes. And that's all I'm we're always require. going for efficiency. Your body's very masterful at that. Yes. You know, in terms of like being able to produce just the amount that you need. So it's like, it doesn't exhaust the system. Yeah. And it's, this is not to say there's no value in obviously concentric and eccentric attractions. Those should make up the, the core and the bulk. No, it's just to training. highlight how underrated that the, the isometric contraction is because nobody really, I mean, very few people you see utilize this technique. Maybe every once in a while you see people doing things like pause squats or things like yeah. Yeah. that in there but which is like a, a very small you know example of yep. where you could u utilize isometric but rarely ever when's the last time you went to the gym and saw somebody doing like a bunch of isometric exercises you just don't see that you very don't often. and again yeah. strength athletes will use them because with strength sports uh it's very objective you either move more weight or you don't and so the the most effective techniques move forward and the ones that aren't so well so effective tend to fall to the fray. Um, you know, bodybuilding took over for a while and bodybuilding was about kind of how the body looks. Now, I do want to say this. If you ask a bodybuilder about the workout routine and ask them if they incorporate isometrics, they'll say no. But if you ask them this, they do, you, flex. do you focus on the squeeze? And they'll say, oh yeah, oh yeah, I hold and squeeze, you know, a rep. Do you do a lot of posing in the off season or right before competition? Oh yeah. I'll, uh, and, and you ask a bodybuilder, how much posing they do mm -hmm. an hour a day before competition. I mean, you know this. When, yeah, when, yeah. So. And that's all isometric uh, type training. Now, they don't realize that it's training. And in fact, what they'll often say is, oh, it just sharpens the body up or allows me to control my muscles more. But what they're actually doing is they're actually incorporating another form of training that's giving them great results. So, and again, the challenge with a lot of these exercises is where do I place it in my routine? What's a, what's a farmer walk work? It, right. it works everything. How do you structure this? Yeah. Do I put on arm day? Do I put on back day? Do I, look, I really don't, it doesn't matter. I'll tell you something right now. If you start an arm workout, a leg workout, or a back workout with heavy farmer walks, do three sets, start with heavy farmer walks, then go do the rest of your workout and tell me you don't notice a difference and how your muscles fiber, uh, fire, excuse me, and how everything feels. Yeah. Um, the other thing, and by the way, I learned this doing farmer. So when, when we first created Map Strong, yeah. we did that with Map uh, Robert Oberst, uh, and he wanted, of course, strongman competitions require you to be able to carry and walk very heavy load. Mm -hmm. So farmer walks are a part of the routine. 
And I worked up to uh, 500 pound farmer walks with the trap bar uh, very quickly. I saw my strength go up very quickly. And I was surprised at how sore my biceps would get from holding the weight. I was just going to ask you what what's your guys' opinion on the com the comparison of soreness from all that. We know that if you do something like the sled, which is all concentric, mm. yep. mm -hmm. uh, you don't get very sore from that. We know if you really focus on the eccentric portion, you'll get really sore from it. Where would you rank isometrics in, in comparison to that? More or less than depends. E eccentric? It depends on what, what type of isometrics, because like you're talking about loaded uh, isometric more damaging more yeah because then you're in end range and a lot of times it's it's unfamiliar territory so most of the time I think when you get sore it's just like your, your body's not quite as uh, responsive yeah. or, or familiar uh, with those types of movements so it kind of gives you that uh, <laughs> that feedback yeah. uh, you more strongly so I but in terms of just body weight isometrics very minimal soreness yeah I, so it really depends right um, but yeah farmer walks more damaging I would consider that like an exercise flexing without resistance, very little damage. You could add that to any strength training routine. And if anything, you'll just facilitate uh, recovery. Mm. Pushing against an immovable object, uh, that could be pretty you know, exhausting and damaging on the body. So it just depends. And of course, the, the more damaging, the more the results tend to be. Mm. But it just depends how you program it. I would say though, I mean, you do get pretty fried. Like I've done a, a full, like super intense isometric workout um, where the whole time I'm just, at you know full capacity yep. of how much force I can output and yep. like if you've ever done that like you get if you go too far you get a bit lightheaded like you have the breathing and all that uh, you really have to pay attention to but uh, the the next day I was just taxed yep and yeah so that yep. does happen uh, with the CNS well I remember when I was a kid we used to do uh, I remember I was lifting with these uh, power lifters for a while went on a little, little kick for like a year I was hanging out with him and a buddy. And uh, he would he would take me and he did this with squats and I remember though vividly how how sore my chest was because I was like man I had I've been training chest for years and I can't remember it being this sore and he would take and this was back when I don't even think I could do two twenty five on the bench and he put like three fifteen on the bar and then there would be like two spotters on the oh, end yeah. and then he'd make me hold just hold it hold that weight and try and I press love it up doing that. knowing yeah. that I can't get it I can't yeah. do two twenty five we got three fifteen on there come on guy uh -huh. but he would have me do that and we would I would hold and drive for like a solid five to six seconds and then they'd re rack yep. it that would be a set then go back do it again oh man I remember my chest being so sore from that and we did the same thing with squats he'd stack the the bar with more weight than I could even do one rep and then would just spot me and tell me to drive, drive as if I was going to be able to lift it. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, it's so funny you bring that up. I was thinking about introducing that a bit to, you know, the high school kids I've been working with. Cause it's, I remember that being so effective of being able to actually feel the weight and acclimate to it, yeah. uh, to challenge myself then a little bit to, to press a little harder. Like mm -hmm. I could handle it. I think it's, there's so much psychology there. If you're not familiar with, with how your body could progress and could, you know, literally uh, put that much weight up. It made a huge difference for me because I remember uh, as a kid, uh, I this was back when I couldn't even squat 225 either and stacking 315 on my back. And just standing. And just standing there. He would just have me unrack it. Just unrack it and just kind of hold it, hold it and stabilize there for a second, and then walk it back up. I bet your core got sore. I bet your, your yeah. glutes got sore. Yeah. And then, like you said, Justin, I just you you start to acclimate to holding that much weight. And then before you and I remember as a thinking when I was doing that, like, I'll never be able to do this. Like this just feels like it's going to crush me. Yep. And mm -hmm. you know, to think where what I can squat today is like it's so weird how you how you can do that. I'll give you a little hack, a little home workout hack for advanced lifters. So it's more of an advanced way of using isometric. So here's what you do. You take some some really sturdy hooks, uh, metal hooks, and you bolt them into some concrete. Okay, so they got to be in there real secure so that you can't rip them out. Then you get a chain, a long chain, and you get a bar that you can attach the chain to. You can now do pretty much any isometric, you know, against an immovable force exercise that you want to do. All you do is you attach the chain each side of the bar, hook the chain to the to the hooks depending on the length. And now you can get underneath it and squat against something that won't move. You could put a bench under it. You could press under something that won't move. You could row under something that won't move. Overhead press, curl, whatever. And you could do adjust, you can adjust the, the, the length, right? So I could do a right. halfway up bench press, a full extension bench press, all the way down bench press. Do this for all the exercises. And you know, here's the thing a lot of people don't know too. If you look at the studies on proper isometric training, now there's a, it definitely plateaus after a certain period. However, the fastest strength gains of all forms of lifting come from isometrics. Very quick, in a very short period of time. 
That being said, just isometric training, you plateau very quickly. That's not the point though. The way you use it is you incorporate it into your normal routine, but it is one of those forgotten training methods. And it's, it's crazy because you mess with them and you get blown away. Maybe we can make it popular again, huh? We will make yeah, it popular again. Absolutely. You know Speaking of classic uh, strongman and stuff, you know, I, on my, on Twitter, I posted a picture of, uh, what I think to be one of the classic male physique ideals, uh, Steve Reeves. You guys know Steve Reeves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the picture where he's standing there and he's like looking forward and he's not super shredded, but he's lean. He's got good muscle and strength. And the reason why I posted it is I said, this is before steroids were really popular, probably natural, most likely in the picture. Before supplements were around, the guy lifted weights three days a week, full body, dumbbells, barbells, and that's it. And that's what he looked like. And how did he eat? <clears throat> Whole natural, meat liver, eggs, milk, uh, you know, potatoes, like that's it. And that's how we looked. And that was the, the you know, You're the ideal. reminding me right now of all the controversy right now around the liver King guy. Have you guys seen him yet? Dude, who is this guy? I, I get people sending me messages. I about mean, him. I've, yeah, I've only seen a video or two of his where he's like just super jacked. Yeah. We got asked about him like a few months ago. I didn't even he's know. He's like raw meat. Yeah, I didn't know like who he. Liver. I didn't know who he was uh, back then. And I mean, the guy's got. I think he's got like a hundred thousand followers or something like that. So he's, or maybe more. Maybe he's close to. A, uh, sorry, he's like a million. Sorry, he's like up to a million followers now. Um, so he's definitely popular on Instagram. When I when they first asked about him, I didn't even know who he was. I had to look look up his his whole his whole stick. Right, he's this super jacked. I think he's like five four or five six. He's like a pretty short dude. But he's like super ripped, does all his videos with, you know, a shirt off mm -hmm. and he's got the, the 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 beard and you know, and he's all his videos are him like biting into like raw meat. Yeah. But I, I there's I think there's a bunch of controversy around him because I think a lot of people I've heard that there's been people that were trying to emulate what he was doing and have had some issues. And I've now seen people like I saw Chris Duffin coming after him. I think I saw Lane going after him. I mean, there's quite a few people. And I, you know, I always hesitate to talk about someone like this because I'm not sure if it does any help by discussing it. I know people always want to yeah. hear our opinion on stuff like this, but I, I also think that's what's gained this guy so much of attention and why he's got almost a million followers is because you got people like like Lane, like Chris Duffin, like these big names, uh, like James Smith. These guys are all big, big, they have big followings themselves, all talking about this guy, and this guy's following just continues to grow. Nobody really wants to watch balanced, healthy people, right? They want the extreme, extreme yeah, like like some kind of gimmick that they're it, it unfortunately the consumer drives those people up way they they, they inflate them up to a, to a level where we're just like why is well, they why are they getting so much attention because it's like it's a freak show it's the, the, the it's this it's the opposite end of the spectrum over here you have the raw vegans everything uncooked that's a, a plant and over here you have now people who eat raw meat by the way this is the silliest thing ever okay <laughs> Humans, yeah, we have fire for a reason. We started cooking with fire. It was one of the, the one of the biggest advancements of, of all of human history. First off, it, cooking meat with fire pre-digests it, okay? Allows us to unlock more of its nutrients, its fats, its proteins, makes it safer. It also does that to plants too. Eating raw plants, not a great idea. Cooking it typically will destroy a lot of the defense mechanisms, allow you to unlock more of the nutrients. Now, the arguments are, this is how silly the arguments are. When you cook vegetables, you destroy 30% of its nutrients. Okay, that's true, but yeah. a rock is full of How minerals. How much more can you... Yeah, I was just saying, yeah no, you can't no. eat a rock. You could definitely eat 30% more when yeah, you've actually easily. cooked it than if it was raw. Hundred, I can eat a bowl. I can eat a huge bowl of well-cooked vegetables. You give me a whole bowl of raw vegetables, and that is going to tear me up. Ugh. Same thing with meat. Like, we... Like, go bite into a raw... Like, go get a cow, kill it, skin it, go bite into it and see how much meat you get with your mouth. Like, good yeah. luck. Yeah, what are the chances of salmonella, <laughs> you know, some kind of bacteria, some kind of parasite? Like, there's just reasons why we've cooked meat. Yeah. Now, now certain organs and certain other foods humans have historically eaten raw, like eggs, for example. You you know, humans have eaten raw because you caught it and you, you know, didn't cook it. But for the most part, like we cook food. So we, it's part of what makes us human. Yeah. It's what makes us, uh, it's one of the reasons why we're able to grow the brains that we have and become these apex predators. We so, learn how to harness fire. So I kind of thought the popularity comes from like, the, just like with politics, right? Like it, there's extreme left, extreme yeah. right. And it's like the whole vegan movement is has been on the rise <laughs> for like the last decade, I'd say more than, more so than ever, right? and politicized yeah. even. And I feel like this is like the revolt, you know, 
fuck yeah. that. I'm not going to do that. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not like, a soy boy. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm exa- a caveman. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, yeah exactly. <laughs> Complete opposite, right? So I kind of feel like that's it's feeding into that. And then, of course, you have the look, right? I mean, if you're on steroids and you're all tanned up and you get the big crazy beard and stuff like that, I think that it's just we're drawn yeah, to you're things You're a character like that. at that point. Yeah. It, just, it, it is funny, isn't it, that the, the vegan representatives look very different than the carnivore <laughs> representatives. Yeah, if I had to choose one to look like. Yeah, and I'm not saying one causes one and one causes the other. That's not that, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just yeah. saying that it's funny that the market that's that that's how they're represented in the market. Right. The, the vegans kind of look like there's a like if I say to you, picture a dude that's that's a raw vegan, like you'd have a certain image in your mind. Uh-huh. And if I said picture a dude that eats raw meat is a different I just think, I just life. think the human psychology around it's so interesting. It is how totally we is. how we are we want to be in a camp so bad. Yeah. It's like w- why not I want to belong. Totally. Why not why not actually utilize some of the benefits of eating vegetables? Why not but use some of the benefits of organ meats and and meat? Yeah. like combine why, it. Yeah, it, and this idea that people think that the one was more for them than the other, it's just like no, it's just doesn't work that way and yeah. it, for the most part I think we ate both of these things yeah. and so it's hilarious that how much we want to be in camps. Dude, speaking know? of the health space, did you guys see Max Lugo? So one of my, obviously one of our favorite people, one of my favorite people in the world, Max Lugo. I love I, the guy. I love how much he does his hair when he comes to see us. He doesn't. <laughs> it's, just, it's just messy. He's gangster, dude. He, he's, just, you he know, doesn't even look he's like. He's so good on camera. He's just, hey, I'm ready. I fucking love Max, so I could say this stuff, but he looks like he didn't even fucking run his hands through his hair. No. Like he didn't even, like he rolled out of bed like this. And and his hair is pressed like this. He sits up, he brushes <laughs> his teeth in the morning, and he thinks, "Now nah, I can fuck." Yeah. Yeah. Gonna, Adam, I think you you always yeah. I think you get mad with people who have hair. <laughs> oh, shit. A little oh, bit snap. of jealousy. Yeah. A little bit of jealousy. And Adam's like, "You maybe, have hair, comb it, God damn it." Maybe oh, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You should Take appreciate care of it. You should yeah. appreciate that shit. No, groom no, it. no. So back. No, Max is great. He's he's uh he's such a great guy. I love him. Pure heart. Super super nice guy. Very smart, obviously. But anyway, he posted. His uh, blood results. He did a blood test and posted his cholesterol, oh. his HDL, LDL, and his, free, and his total testosterone. Okay, can we take guesses? His, so not free, but total. So total testosterone. Now remember, the range for men, depending on the lab, is usually between 300 to like 1,200 for men in testosterone. <clears throat> so 1,200 is like upper, upper limit. 300 is like, that's super low. 490 yeah. is my guess. Okay, so Low normal. What do you think? I'll say like 500. 500? Oh, somewhere. Jesus, could you be any closer? Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, just like, like the 10 uh, more. Price is right. right. Yeah. One dollar. One dollar. Yeah. One one dollar. dollar. <laughs> 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 any guesses, Doug? I'll give him 781. 781. Oh, 1,100. Whoa. Wow. He has, he's he's in the, he's in the. Shame super, on me. He's in the yeah, super he's... testosterone. Him and Doug together, man. They're both like super testosterone. Yeah. He's, really he's high. He's carrying some boulders around. Hella high, dude. Now he's a very high healthy guy he's never met which is with- why i probably should have guessed higher because i do know he's a very healthy dude but he he doesn't come off like he's got t- like i feel like people with really high testosterone yeah. they come off that way like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know doug has that angry chimp side well, to dude. him that we've all seen hey, that. maybe it's, it's like, like <laughs> you know the testosterone's flowing in that guy you know what i'm saying You're like okay i see it now yeah. where i did max doesn't look like yeah, he but would- the hair thing is like the no fucks given right he's yeah. just show he, dude i own this well he's you first, know, he's, first, first for him high first testosterone. All, max is very assertive he's, he's a very nice guy yeah. but he is not weak i've seen him as very confident yeah, he's very assertive. Like yeah. he's he's a, he's a very nice guy, but if you push him the wrong way, he's not one to fold or whatever. Well, he's intelligent. He's confident. Driven. Like, yeah. Very driven. Right. Yeah, Writes yeah. books yeah, and yeah. all that. Those are all associated with testosterone. Very calm. Right. He's not an anxious person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, super high testosterone. Wow, good. Yeah, because he talks yeah. all the time about you know estrogens, and he's he's pretty on top of like you know avoiding a lot yeah. of things. Now I'm really lower. jealous. Hair yeah. and natural high testosterone. I know, what the hell? That is lame. No, and you know, and you know he's never messed with hormones. He never took. Remember that the pro hormone craze. That, yeah. You know, I fell for, and most people, he didn't take steroids. He didn't. You know, he's very healthy. So it makes sense that his testosterone would uh, would be yeah. that high. So good for you, Max. Yeah. For you. What's your What's your theory on hormone therapy in the next decade? It's going to explode. Um, explode. Yeah. Do you yeah, think it's going to? I mean, I feel like it. sometimes I always wonder. Again, are are we in this little bubble? You know, and it's like because it, it obviously in our space it's becoming more and more popular. But is it going to be so big that like even people that are not hardcore into working out? Are going to yeah. consider taking uh, hormone replacement therapy because it, when the we're, downside we're, we're slowly declining when the when the risks are low, taking testosterone in therapeutic doses, the health risks or whatever risks associated with it are very low. Testosterone is very safe. You can take now if you took 
you know, 10 times the normal dose. Now you're starting to run into problems. I'm talking about therapeutic doses. The risk is low. It's a, for men especially, it's a feel good hormone. You take a man whose testosterone is on the lower end of the spectrum and you bring it to the upper end of the spectrum, they'll almost always just feel better. So mm -hmm. it feels good. It's like an antidepressant. The major, a, the major hurdle I see is the expense because the, the, the super rich and famous have been onto this for decades. Yeah, I mean, like your actors and actresses that make a ton of money, they've been on growth hormone growth and hormone. testosterone. I don't know, man. Every time a new iPhone comes out, everybody goes and buys that thing and pays hundreds of bucks on their cell service. I think when the when yeah, but it hasn't public, been accessible to to that point. Yeah, is yeah. like it has been just exclusively, you know, prescribed yep. by doctors that were outside the the fray. It has a stigma. Yeah, it also has a stigma. I look, I fell for the stigma when I test came back with low testosterone. I felt embarrassed and oh, I got to take testosterone. That's a you know, am I less of a man type of deal? These are thoughts that guys have. Once the stigma is gone and it's accepted, and yeah. you know, especially therapeutic doses. I think everybody. I think it's gonna be so popular because it just if it, it feels good, your health is better, your health markers are better, quality of life is higher. Like, I, I just well, I mean, technically, I think you're healthier if you're someone like Doug, where you don't naturally have to take. Oh yeah, it don't and, compare it to natural. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like I mean, if you ha if you could be freaking what was he last time thirteen hundred or something? If you could be that high and what were you eleven? Not that high, like. Uh, 1080 or something. 1080. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. I wish it was 1300, yeah. Yeah. but it's not. Yeah, it's, I'm no. working that direction. I don't think you need any more, dude. I think you're just fine. I think that's okay. But I mean, if you, if uh, again, if you have achieved that through well, of uh, course. good habits and behaviors Absolutely. and diet, uh, obviously way better than somebody who's taking Absolutely. Uh, HRT. Right? Absolutely. So. Yeah. No, it's just the stigma is a big thing. Uh, I think once the stigma is kind of erased or, or, or changed, I think a lot of guys, especially because testosterone levels are going down. And it's an epidemic, and we mm -hmm. don't know why. Mm -hmm. Really don't know why. It's a really, I'm not just making this up. You can look this up if you want. But for the last four or five decades, this is not, this is not a recent thing. We've been observing this for a well, long time. Well, you brought up the pornography thing the other day. And I, what I think it is, I just think it's- It's, it's a combination all, of yes, things. Yes, it's so many different things. But there's definitely something environmental that's contributing to Sure, xenoestrogens, so you, you yes. have all, I think it's just, the, that's just it. And it, you know, if you tease that one thing out, because you'll have people on the other, the science community that will like laugh at that. Like, oh, come on, your receipts aren't declining. You know, you touching your receipts yeah. or cooking in a certain pan yeah. every once in a while is not making your testosterone drop 400 points right. but if you you combine that, that with that lack of activity yeah lack of activity don't strength train you also you know you, shitty food how many studies out there that are gonna uh, test a long enough period of time right. where that low of a, do a dose of like you know xenoestrogens will actually make an effect yeah. Yeah. like they just won't conduct that now you want to hear another another piece to this little theory I've brought this up a long time on the show so it's been a while so they studies will show this women when they're on birth control if, so they'll do these studies where they'll take a man's face and they'll masculinize it digitally or they'll feminize it. So it's the same face. And if they feminize it, they make it a little softer, less of a jawline, less brow ridge. Like there's a few things they do. And then they'll masculinize it. So they'll take the same face, more jawline, a little bit more, you know, brow ridge. So basically higher signs of testosterone, lower signs of testosterone, same face. And they'll show women these pictures. When women are ovulating, they consistently pick the higher testosterone face. Yeah. When they're not, they'll pick the neutral face or the lower testosterone face. When they're on birth control, lower testosterone face, constantly, okay? Now, birth control has been widely used now for decades. It, what if women now are selecting, without realizing it, slowly selecting lower testosterone mates to have children with, and this is part of the I factor. I totally believe yeah. that. I mean, I even feel that about the conversations that we, you would have, think of, go back to, you know, junior high, high school and the kind of, you know, alpha dude that everybody, the girls liked when you were a kid and stuff like that. Like the, that changed over the course of the next 20 years. It turned more into a metrosexual type of like sensitive yeah, now, guy. Now who, it's Bill Gates. Dude, did you know? Yeah, he's, he's the hot <laughs> one. So Nobody's saying Bill Gates is hot, dude. I don't know, man. What he's, circles do you run he's in? pretty rich, though. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yes. know what, though? Hey, this is so- it's money. This is, this is also a trip. Look this up. <laughs> Women who, get mar who meet a man and get married while they're on birth control. So they're on birth control. They meet a guy, fall in love, get married on birth control. Then they're like, hey, let's have a baby. They go off birth control, the divorce rate goes up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's like I feel like that's such how a hard, shitty with that's that such piece. a correlation thing, though, not causation. No, dude. really. No, even if they don't have kids, if they just go off birth control, there's a rise in divorce in in statistics. Now, how shitty is that? You're attracted to someone, so and then your hormones change. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, he's not that hot anymore. So the, okay, so a girl gets off 
uh, birth control starts like looking at other men as more desirable, more attractive. Or the husband that she's with is no longer attractive like he was before. Uh, I see. Fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. I feel like that's a really hard one to connect one because of all the variables. No, you, I, I don't. Feel, I agree. But I think in, I mean, it's like saying that when you can, uh, when you, but the, when you gi- can, the Giants win every time there's lo- thunder and lightning in Idaho. Yeah. You know, every time there's thunder. Oh, like what do they call it? An spurious correlation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear what you're saying. But when you combine that with the other studies, I think it does point to, look, here's the deal. Hormones drive. Well, that's to to an extent. uh, Behaviors. I mean, I did see that study where they showed uh, how they're more prone toward the jawline, the more masculinized face, you know, during ovulation. I mean, it makes perfect sense. I mean, like evolutionary, you always bring it back to that, right? Of like, who's going to stick around uh, versus, you know, the other guy that's like sort of. You want the strong genes. Yeah. You want the strong genes, but then you also want the nurture on top of that. Dude, they they nobody wants. Hey. Just me. Hey, you know how messed up that is? You just tat, high five, you're in, pal. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know what they theorize? They theorize that, I don't know if this is true or not, but thousands of years ago before you had paternal tests or whatever, that the girl, that the female would mate with the fucking testosterone dude. And then when she's pregnant, it, go and hook up with the dude that's going to stick around. And he yeah. thinks that's his kid. So he ends up raising the freaking testosterone dude's kid. Where did you read? What did you say? This was part of the theory, like part of what may have happened in the past, that there were a lot of, that th- not all the time, but this happened much more than people realized where women had mm. got pregnant from one man, but the child was raised by a father who didn't know that it wasn't theirs. What's interesting, I remember all those, uh, they're talking about like gladiators and like how, you know, a lot of the women would like throw themselves at these gladiators. Oh, you, you, you know, they used to sell their sweat. Oh yeah, you know that? Gla- yeah, at the, at the Coliseum, like to drink, or no, pour like, on you, like or? in bottles, like and women would buy it, like an aphrodisiac. So these, these gladiators would scrape their sweat off and sell them in bottles, and chicks would buy. It. Really? Yeah, dude. I didn't know that was. Isn't a that thing. trippy? That is very trippy, especially uh, since it I'd, probably stunk. I'd be annoyed. Yeah. What are you, honey? What so, are you buying? I mean, I feel like if shit like that was happening all the way back then, we can't make fun of like the whole like vagina candle or all those weird oh, things. Come happen. on, bro. It's all we're all human behavior doesn't change. Just our, ta- our oh, technology. There's all kinds does. of weird stuff. Yeah, it's all. Hey, sim- bro. Well, why similar. don't you help make us millions, dude, and figure out something? You're Mister Evolutionary. Find something like that. Why weren't you on that? We could have been the first one to do a dick Listen, candle. The, the, <laughs> what, <laughs> those influencers sell dick. fart <laughs> jars, right? It's still happening. Nobody wants to buy a dick candle. <laughs> 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 That's not it doesn't sound appealing at all. Hey, you can sell weird smells. I mean, there's to guys. gotta be somebody who thinks that's appealing. Yeah. No, oh. yeah, guys. Yeah. Gay dudes will buy guy, let's be honest, okay? Men are you the weirdos. Gay, We're the weirdos, dude. We're like the ones that are weird, bro. Come on. Yeah. You ain't look at you ain't. Do you think even gay guys like dick smell? I feel like they don't even like dude, it. Gay, they're still guys, dude. They're still gonna be. We're the weird ones. There's wow. Dudes, are, listen. Yeah. When you go to, I feel uh, like Justin would know the answer. Whole, to that this best. is a new level for us. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen. Dick they smell? have vending machines on, and they have vending. It was machines. in Doug's notes. That's why I brought I it know, up. <laughs> they had Doug shaking. Doug's like, make sure to talk about. Dick's does it today. have a smell? I <laughs> guess listen, it does. They have uh, vending machines in some parts of the world. I think Japan has these. No, where, Doug told us about. Yeah, that. where they're like they're they're dirty un- underwear. This is gotta be that, the fourth that time girls wore. Up, and Doug. dudes will buy the underwear. Okay, you there's were there ever vending machines with guys underwear? Never seen them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I didn't Nobody's actually see the that, women's dude. either, but I've heard about it, and I what believe that to be true. Like? <laughs> guys underwear, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. all ratty, girls in it, tidy whiteies, <laughs> not so white. <laughs> That's so gross. Dude. Disgusting. Nobody wants that. Nobody all wants right. that, dude. All right, we're going to change. Yes, oh. please change the subject. Let's, uh, let's, all, let's all change the subject. Doug, you shouldn't uh, have put in your notes, then. I no. would have brought it up. Anyway, uh, hey, sorry. Speaking of crazy people, though, I found this out. Um, God, what's her name? I can't even read up there, but it, um, there's this. Shannon Richardson. Thank you, Shannon Richardson. She's an actress that, oh, was, that was in um, Walking Dead and, I guess, Vampire Diaries, okay. whatever. Do you, have you heard about her story? I guess she like just went completely batshit crazy and was making her own kind of powdered poison, uh, like made out of some kind of like bean. I don't know. Like, I don't even know how you make it. Ricin? Ricin? Ricin. Thank yeah, yeah. you. Oh. And um, <laughs> I don't know. I know that. how do you know that? Yeah, yeah I was like, how do I because know, that's create a, my own that, poison? Because that's a CIA or intelligence agency uh, poison. Well, they, a small amount and a dart and you get a heart attack or you die. That's It's, it's really? crazy to me that you can actually make, I guess my takeaway from it is that you can actually make that at your house. Yeah. Like that's crazy. And I think you can't It's really legal. It, it would probably come it? up as beans, right? Yeah, you die and they can't tell. I think you get a heart attack. You see Breaking Bad? 
That was part of the uh, one of his episodes. Oh, was it? Oh, really? Was it yeah, Ricin that, that he used? It's yeah. R-I-C-I-N. You're right. I do remember yeah. that now. Yeah. I, I do Doug, remember Doug, can you that. look up how to make ricin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Flagged. Yeah. It's made out of what? Rice? Yeah. So, okay, but wait, so, wait, so, so what was she doing with it? She, so she, like, she was actually, I guess, was trying to frame her husband. This is her third husband she was on. <laughs> and she was like writing letters to like Obama and like lacing it. What? Uh, and had it all addressed and everything. And then husband? actually like called the FBI uh, to say, oh, my husband has, you know, been e doing this. Evil. And, and is about to send these off. And literally she was the one like about to send all these letters so off. So she's obviously in jail? Yeah, she's in jail. So yeah. how'd this all come out? Like, do you know how that, how it unfolded? I, th I've, I don't know, but like she just came out <clears throat> one day and like uh, called the FBI and like uh, tried to get, basically tried to frame her husband. Oh my for, God, what an evil person. Murder. Yeah, like psycho, dude. Yeah, who, dude, no, no. Who had the notes, psychopaths like psychopaths? I feel like that's a perfect transition. Yeah, yeah no, that was an old uh, study that I read. Did you guys know that uh, they've done studies on uh, psychopathic behavior and find that people that are most attractive attracted to people with psychopathic behavior are also psychopaths themselves. I feel like the, you didn't need a study for I that. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? Crazy people like crazy yeah. people. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Here's your sign. Yeah. You like murder too? Yeah. Yeah. You ever have a, like, that friend? Like, I don't know, man. Every girl I date is fucking crazy, bro. Yeah. You look at yeah, There's like, one common denominator. Yeah. But I don't know, man. <laughs> Weird. Why are they uh, finding their way to you? Yeah. How's that, you know, I mean, I feel work? like we're all guilty to, that, to some extent to that point. I mean, how many people- Oh, like, you get attracted to the dysfunction and others that you have yourself. Yeah. Of course, bro. Yeah. If you're yeah. if you're like it makes you, you feel comfortable. Oh, yes. Makes you feel dude. at home. Of course. Like if yeah. you like if you drink too much and then you find a girl, she, oh, she likes to drink too. Like we're perfect match. You yeah. know? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's totally true. I think it takes a lot of self-awareness to actually try and date or go after people you know that are gonna call you on your shit because nobody wants that. But yeah. I mean that in reality, that's probably what makes a better partnership if you're going to do this thing called life with this other person for the rest of your life like probably get somebody it's annoying though who's, <laughs> yeah. is it better to have someone <laughs> what was it oh i was because i was talking with courtney about this while she's really into the whole murder stuff and um <laughs> was like like listens to podcasts she's, watches the she's shows she's buying a lot of beans lately too like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what i haven't even i'm glad like, we got that insurance no red care. flags at all uh for me uh but yeah <laughs> she's got issues for a while yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, ooh, yeah, She's like, Fuck, a parasite? No, you know, maybe I'm eating something poisonous. Um, yeah, so she was telling me, like, I guess that they haven't really attributed any, like, actual gene associated or correlated with uh, um, psychopathic behavior. Oh, really? It was, it was very much more attributed to, like, trauma or, like, brain yeah. injury or, um, you know, the environment. Environmental factors. Yeah, what they'll probably my what I will assume is that there's a combination of the right genes with the right trauma. So for one, sure, one that's, that's without the other genetics case. Epigenetic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like some kind of yeah, like one without the other doesn't cause what's, how, what's that whole what you one's the gun, then the what loads the yeah, gun, smoking, fires. Yeah, yeah, your yeah, your the your genes load the gun. What you do pulls the trigger. Yeah, so it's the bullets are in there. You pull the trigger for heart disease, cancer. Or whatever. So lifestyle makes the, the the biggest difference. Yeah, I keep thinking though, like after the whole um, in the seventies where we had like this like surge of all these um, psychopaths and, and serial, serial killers. killers. Like well, I feel like that was just. I wonder what the numbers are of like. If we're just more aware of them then than we were previously, well, before or, we didn't even know, right? Yeah, before we didn't have a name for them. I forget what. Well, document. Jack the Ripper was a very well-known serial killer. Yeah, I mean there was a few, but it yeah. wasn't like there was. Well, so did they call him a serial like killer though, before the seventies, or was it after the seventies? Because before the seventies, I don't even think they the term the in, term came out. What did they call him? In MK Ultra and that whole stuff. I mean, I had to have produced like because you mean Ted Bundy and well, so 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 I, I've read articles on this, and uh, same thing with. Matt Mass shooters is that um, that at the more that these events happen and become popular through media, the more that they trigger. So uh, like like mimicking. Yeah. So like you're, on, you're a crazy person. You're kind of on the edge, you know, and you can be pushed either way. And then you're watching news articles of serial killers. Yeah. They think that that pushes these small percentage of people over the edge. Same thing with mass yeah, shooters. I, You'll notice that. there'll be a mass shooting and then there'll be like three or four more mm -hmm. that'll happen because they watch the news, gets lots of public, you know, lots of airtime. 
and then they'll go and do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, 1974. It was a popular... So I bet you they didn't even call Jack the Ripper a serial killer until after the they 70s. They just called him Jack the Ripper, which right. is way cooler than serial killer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is it, yeah. is, was it the Unabomber or was it Bundy who had the, the crazy manifesto? Have you guys ever read his manifesto? Oh. It's like spot on to like where oh, we're at. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah Unabomber. I think. Is it either Unabomber? Unabomber? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was... A, if you had never read that before, you should Dude, read it. Did you ever, Kaczynski, did you ever read, read the Zodiac? Did you ever see how the Zodiac killer, they freaking finally deciphered his, his notes? and what he wrote. You hear about this? Uh, I watched the documentary. I don't know if they covered it. Yeah, I don't that. remember what it said, but they cracked the code because he used to write in code and stuff, yeah. send it to the newspapers and they couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. And then recently somebody cracked the code and, and figured recently? out. Recently? Yeah, it was like the last maybe five or 10 years. Maybe Doug can, can find it where they, they figured out what he was saying. So it's uh, kind of crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. What's what is crazy about these crazy people is- They the, want to be known, by the way. They yeah. don't want- they, it, Part of the excitement- is that other people talk right. about what they did? Hundred. Well, there's they want to toe that line of getting caught too, you know, mm-hmm. and like leaving enough bread uh, breadcrumbs uh, out there, so it's like you can you can get so far and so close, and like it, it it's thrilling. Well, isn't isn't there too like a is it in there a correlation with psychopaths and like brilliance too? Like a lot of them are really intelligent. Oh, like it's not like cor- a lot of dummies that are running around no, doing serial a, killing. There's like, definitely a line, a thinner line between a super like genius and then also just dysfunction, dysfunctional thinking, craziness. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know about that. I don't know about serial killers though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very weird. I mean, I figure if you get away with multiple murders, you have to be pretty intelligent about your way of doing it right i mean maybe. you can't just like randomly go kill while well, actually maybe it's not that hard actually I, you know i don't know well no so the, supposedly the the uh, we're going to talk about how to get away with murder one of the best ways to get away with it is by being inconsistent about what you're doing oh like, yeah i think what is it 80 something percent of all murders is related or connected to yeah. the the well the, so you doing like a like i know like, like a super random bundy and some of that would just go in a parking yeah. lot and grab a did random you, person you guys are the hardest to find did you guys ever read about the ice man the hit man for the mafia that guy, they call him the Ice Man because he figured out this brilliant way of not getting caught. He killed somebody, freeze the body, keep it for six, seven months, defrost it, and then dump it somewhere. Oh, and they they couldn't the connect time, they couldn't connect the time of murder. The way he got caught was he didn't fully defrost the body, dropped it off. They saw ice crystals in it and said, oh, these bodies are being frozen. And then they went back and connected them to the murder. Wow. Yeah. But that's what he did. He would freeze them and do that. Or they would he would drop them in a vial of acid and melt everything and really- Fucked up guy, dude. If you ever read about this guy. Anyway, speaking back to the poison, the ricin. Yeah. Um, I read about that because there was this other way of killing people that use like these radioactive <laughs> isotopes. Uh-huh. There was this journalist, I think it was in Russia, either a journalist or, or a pol- politician who suddenly started to yeah. s- slowly die and he couldn't figure out what was happening and they were was speculating. Was the doorknob uh, that they touched? I've heard stories Something, about that. And you can't trace it. And the yeah. dude, like, they showed his face before and after. I don't know if Doug could find it. Really messed up shit, which led me down a rabbit hole of <laughs> all this crazy. Yeah, like, there's levels, right? Like, in terms of the intelligence agencies, I'm like, oh my God, what what kind of methods do they have to, to get rid of people? Oh, it's wild. I, well, I thought there was, like, a like someone, like, famously historical that was, like, her, his wife was, like, just barely putting it in his breakfast every single... Oh, wasn't yeah. that... Wasn't there a story like that? Well, there's a lot of those. Those are called... Uh, what are they called? Well, Munchausen's yeah. with, with kids, but, yeah, I guess... Which, I don't know that if that one? applies. What is that one? It's well, when they, the... Uh, a it's lot of times with females, yeah. Yeah, she, for the she, most part, they want to keep uh, the, the their vic- victim sick. Yeah, so that's what I think the story, I think that's what she wanted. She wanted him to be sick, but not kill him. Like she was giving a dose that was not enough to kill him, but just to Isn't keep him Isn't that weird? So, that, so that's one of the very yeah. few places where more women do it than men when it comes to murder. And it's that. And it's and it's what it is. The theory is that they, they'll slowly poison you. They don't want you to die, but they want you to always be sick to depend on them. To de- yeah, to be dependent. Because now they're they needed. Always have they have to care for you. Yeah, dude. And mm-hmm. so there's moms that'll do that to kids That's, yeah, and just keep them sick for years. Disgusting. Yeah, yeah super. What was that in? Uh, that was in uh, uh, Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense, yeah. Remember that? Oh, that was in there? I just, I yeah. just recently watched that and scared the shit out of myself. I haven't watched that in a long time. Oh, yeah. It's so good. One. Oh, it my God. One. Such a good movie. It's, it's sad, dude. I forgot yeah, how is. sad that movie it is. is. Yeah. Uh, speaking of TV and stuff, you are watching now Raised by, Raised by Wolves. Yes, dude. into Let's talk about about this i'm actually i really am enjoying it told you i knew you'd love it I it's, knew it sound was- it's it's super original and um i just like um i like there's not a lot of original shit out there that uh, i haven't seen before especially in the science science fiction kind of realm uh but uh it's i mean it, it starts off with a bang the very first episode's a really hard one to like hook and sell you on mm-hmm. and they did a really good job like you know getting you 
all immersed in this environment and then crazy shit happens at the same time. You're like, wow, it yeah. is crazy. Well, they do a good job. And HBO always crushes it, right? It's an HBO uh, series. You, you you go from thinking these AI robots are evil to thinking they're good to the humans are evil to they're good and their God is fake. To, is their God real? And it just, you, you well, don't know what to think when, when, episode to the next and it really checks smart. all the boxes for me because like i love when science fiction can also explore religious undertones and they can figure out like the whole spiritual side alongside yeah. you know technology and and also like uh humanity trying to figure out uh <laughs> how to deal with basically being obliterated by the you know all these ai uh robots yeah it's so all the sci-fi people. It's, love it. Did you hear? Like, Ju yeah. Did you hear Justin and I talking about Marvel and stuff? No, what's going on? Well, we were talking about like series, right? How that's like the new thing is to like you know oh, yeah. Marvel, Star Wars, all that. Yeah, like, can't wait for the Lord of the Rings one to come. Well, out. Well, no, you know what? I you, and you've said this before that what you would love. What would be something to, to do a whole series on a, a character that Incredible you, Hulk? No, oh, you, you said it before and no, you got all so excited. excited. The Rocky and yeah, the doing the Mickey Rocky franchise. Okay, so. Are you, they gonna do Mickey? I, well, no. Listen, 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 dude. I'm just okay. I'm setting the table for you that there's a good chance that something that you said you would love to happen would po is probably going to happen because I I shared like a, I think it was a year ago, maybe longer, when Amazon bought the uh, bought MGM for like eight billion dollars. Oh, wow. Part of that strategy was all the feed the Prime Video stuff. So they have and MGM owns the rights to Rocky among other like very famous popular Bro, series the mickey story and since would be that's so good this is becoming the formula right is to buy a a franchise and like tell this. the story before the yeah story. and tell the all the spinoffs and it's because you've already got a built-in loyal audience and then maybe you attract Bro, a new imagine audience imagine 19 they're gonna do it 1930s america irish immigrant mickey poor rough fighting the rules of boxing back then were crazy. Like the story of Mickey would be so freaking epic. Well, yeah. I'm calling that it's going to happen. Yeah. So it's it it's uh, almost free. I mean, if you look at all these other streaming services, the strategy that they're all doing is they're buying these big franchises with the intent, I think, to make them all yeah. into spinoffs. Yeah. Hey, speaking of mm. business, I've been reading about the high protein cereal market. So obviously we work with- Blowing up. Blowing up. So I obviously we work with Magic Spoon um, and they're the high protein. Uh, by the way, high protein cereals the have existed, have existed in the past. They sucked before. They're not really high protein. If, if you look at the back. Yeah, nine the grams. Of yeah, protein, dude, it just tastes awful. Not even. It's like seven grams of protein. High protein cereal. No, it's not high protein. Magic Spoon's really high protein. It's like 20 something grams for a small serving. So you're going to get good protein. That market is exploding right now. Be and, and partially because I think Magic Spoon showed the cereal producers this is a market. People want this. Yeah. So I'm reading articles about how the big cereal producers now are looking at maybe moving mm. into this market. Now, now, I predict, do you guys think someone like Magic Spoon will get offers to buy them out well, by some of these big producers? I mean, you saw what happened to Primal Kitchen. Like, they yeah. got bought up by, what, Kraft or yep, something yep, like that? Yeah. Yep. So I don't know. It's, it's potentially a possibility. I mean, they've obviously proven that there's demand there and it's it's a viable option such a good and bad thing at the same time right you got to be a little scared too like when you think about general mills and post and like yeah, these yeah. massive brands that have tons of resources and power how hard do you really really think it would be to reverse engineer what these proteins these proteins they could are doing? but you know why they sometimes buy it is because easier they, they have to, it's easier yeah and they have it, to win over the, the it's just the like consumers. what we just talked about with instead of redoing rocky and writing you buy the the franchise so yeah. you have the right so you have the built-in audience yep. it's the same concept it's yep. like you buy Magic Spoon because it's already got millions of people that are bought into the brand and versus trying. But I don't know. with food. Plus, when it comes to health food, though, I'll say this. When it comes to health food, like look at Magic Spoon. A good percentage of their core consumers are fitness fanatics, people who want to build muscle, burn body fat, like who are interested in, in health and fitness and performance. If General Mills came out with a high protein cereal, they will be so skeptical. Right, I would look yeah. at a General Mills high protein cereal. I'd be like, right, Captain Crunch high protein. No thanks. Yeah, but Magic Spoon won me over. So if they bought Magic Spoon and left them alone, 
that would be, in my opinion, that would be the strategy, right? Yeah, it would be interesting to see what they did, too. I mean, I would love to see it happen just because it would get everybody to shut up that thinks it's like uh, like Magic Spoon is like getting over on everybody price-wise. It's like if, if and even if- Protein is expensive. It's just expensive. Yeah. If you take something that, ha if you're going to get a bowl of cereal, have 30, 40 grams of protein. Of, of like whey protein. Yeah, you're. it's going to be It's going to be a lot more than you know Lucky Charms or an yeah. off-brand of Lucky Corn Charms. Corn wheat cereal. Yeah, so I mean, I would like to see it just for that reason alone to get everybody to understand that it's not that it's a, it's not the brand magic spoon mm -hmm. that is just gouging people for prices they're more i bet their margins are probably the same or less than what the yeah. margins are for someone who's making lucky charms or captain crunch I would, I would totally yeah. agree yeah speaking of sponsors i just got you might have talked about these before but i haven't got them until recently the meta pants from viori yeah meta joggers or no meta Pants. No, the pants. Okay. Yeah, they're like slacks. So that the are joggers stretchy. become one of my favorites. No, bro, the metas. you got to get these. So you, I could wear them out to dinner. Button down shirt, look real nice. Mm -hmm. Like they're nice looking slacks, but they're not slacks. They're freaking Viore stretchy, comfortable material. Like you could wear them and work out in them, but they literally look like nice. Like oh, interesting. Like, yeah, like again, I could wear a button down shirt. And look like and go to a nice restaurant and warm, which I did. I did the other night. Oh yeah. wow! Super. I had no idea. Get I, your squats in the morning, and then you go out to dinner that night. Dude, the same pants. That's I wanna, I wanna a trip. To, I have I have a pair of like uh, Nike golf slacks that are like that. That are sporty. You can dress them up, dress them down like that. I wonder if they're, if they're like that. So is it kind of like that material that like uh, yeah, almost like they look like slack, like nice yeah. slacks. They don't look like workout pants. They look like again you can But they're not cotton, them. they're more this kind of like no, windbreak so yeah, last elasticity to it. There's sure. elasticity and pull. super comfortable like you're wearing I don't even remember seeing those. those it's are, athleisure wear. The yeah, other I ones have that, like 3 of them. Yeah, dude, I love them. Oh, I thought the ones that you wear most of the time are the um Ripstop. No. Well, I do those, but I my favorite's the Meta though. I'm I'm yeah. with you on yeah, that. Yeah, dude. Oh, oh, so the Meta joggers, so Sunday joggers were my first like I was on a kick on that, have all the colors in that and that, those are some of my favorite. But those are very uh you know, sweatpantsy, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. which, which is fine for what we do. But if I want to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sweat pants, but if I want to go, I want to go out or if I want to wear like a polo shirt, the meta joggers, that's why I like the meta joggers yeah, so yeah, much yeah, is yeah. because they, I can put a polo shirt on with it and it looks sharp and I can put a t-shirt yeah. on it and I look, you know, sporty. Hey, spe speaking of looks and all this stuff. So we're now at this age. Okay. This is finally happening. Mm -hmm. Are you guys seeing except my daughter and my son now, sons in high school, daughters in junior high, and now I'm starting to see straight up kids are dressing the way that we dressed when we were kids. It's all come back now. Yeah. Are you seeing this shit? Oh, Always yeah, happens. It's full you see mullets? Kids are wearing mullets? Yeah. That's a thing now. Thank you. Thank we you made for bringing fun of that, that up. We're, I'm actually, I was trying to, you know, shoe that in with the Raised by Wolves conversation too because- They have mullets in there. They all have mullets. And I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. And then all of like, like Theo Vaughn and like some of these other comedians and like popular people in entertainment, like literally have mullets. And it's like, at first it's kind of novelty and funny yeah. and whatever. And like now literally people go and I, I was talking to Vicky about this too. And um, she was saying that people come in requesting specifically like this whole party in the front or party in the back and business, business in, the, in front. the front. Yeah, dude. Like what? Yeah. So like, if you read, um, I've brought this up before. I haven't talked about this book in a long time, but it's such a great, I think it's Derek Thompson. I think is the author. Maybe Doug could look for me. It's called hit makers. It was a recommendation from oh, yeah, when, we, for, when I that. first met Tom Bilyeu, uh, he recommended it. And it's like the, the science of, of going viral. Yeah, I right? saying that, yeah. And this is part of that formula. And something it, it, wor uh, it works familiar. in music, it works in mo movies, it works in clothing styles. You want something that is familiar enough that But then you, also a little new, right? Exactly. Oh, yeah. And so there, there literally is a formula for things like this working. And there it is right there. It is Derek Thompson. I, don't, I barely ever remember the author. That's a great You've been read. sharp lately. What's yeah, going on? Thank you. Yeah. I wish I had a commercial to sell you on why I'm so sharp right now, but I don't. Are so, you? Yeah. No, I'm, yeah, I'm being honest. I'm not trying to sell shit. Natural. Natural. I'm, I'm right. serious. You've been sharp <laughs> as fuck lately. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, you know what's, you know, it, uh, what is interesting that I have found right now, I would have to say that my, which totally goes against our, our probably our brand or probably a message, what, what I'm going to say. But um, he's on cocaine. No, 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 no. <laughs> lots uh, and lots my, of Adderall. My, my training volume is is really low compared to what it's been in the last like 20 years. Like it's, but it's efficient, but, but consistent. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm consistently three times a week, you know, a bad week, maybe two, a really bad week, one, but I'll never string two weeks together right now yeah. with one time a week or something like that. So 
pretty consistent between two to three times you a week. You feel healthy. Yeah, I just feel, and I noticed it in my sex drive. I, it just, I feel sharper. I'm getting better rest. Um, it makes me wonder uh, how much, and I know we talk about this, I, I, do I have that tendency to really overtrain? Of course. Like I start off in the right direction, doing really well, and then get like, oh, loving the gains, loving the feel, loving the strength, like, and more and more and more. And even though we preach about it all day long, and for the first time in a long time, I'm really not even focused on that. I have no, you know, strength goals right now. I have no even aesthetic goals right now. I'm more focused on many other aspects of my life, but I also recognize the importance of keeping that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And so right now I'm kind of like idling in the training area in a way where I'm, I'm doing it to complement everything else in my life. And I have to say that it's, I, I feel some of the healthiest I've ever felt That's in, my, great, dude. in my life. I can and, tell. But I don't, I know I don't look the sickest. Like I've looked yeah. way better. I know I've been way stronger, mm -hmm. but I feel really, really good with this kind of balance that I, I I've tell. got going on right now. Yeah, so. I know. I, when I cut my training volume down, uh, I got better results. And now I've already accepted the trade-off that, yeah, I'm probably overtraining a little bit, but mentally I like training so much that, okay, fine. You know, I've just accepted it. Also, I'm a little hard headed. So I'm pretty sure I do better with four days a week. I'm at five days a week. I'll probably do better with four with hard training, but it's hard, dude. It's hard for me. I yeah. Know. It's, it it's, keeps me sane. That's the thing. You guys know, you guys know how I get when I don't work. No. Out. And, there, and I think to deal with me. there's, oh, yeah. and, I, and, and I think to each their own. And I also think that, you know, where you're at seasonal life, you know, I'm, somebody on Instagram fired me up like a, about a month ago, like, uh, made a comment to me about, uh, that I make excuses for my, my training volume or whatever. It's like, I'm, I'm like, Oh, I'm too busy or I'm a dad. Or it's just like, no, I'm just at different seasons of my life. Like there's times where bro, training should be a tool and you use the tool to improve the quality of your life. It yeah. shouldn't be your life. If yeah. training is your life, there's something is you're a loser. Right. Just yeah, a yeah. different, uh, just a buff one. <laughs> yeah. <you> know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is better than it's not a, a buff fucking one. loser. Let's just be a different though. kind of, way. you'd rather be a buff loser. That's though, right. Than it's, a, well, it's a true. Loser. I mean, I, I just true. think that in my personal journey, I've come full circle on that. I've done all the, I've chased the, the lifting PRs. I've chased the getting on stage. Look, I've, I've done all that. Uh, I, I ran away from my insecurity of being a skinny guy for so yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. And I just feel like I've come full circle. That's also because people don't know behind the scenes. I mean, you, you do so much on the, you know, we have an investment arm of the company that Adam really, you know, runs quite well. And we all have full trust in him because he's smart and he does it right and whatever. Uh, that takes a lot of time. So it's not like you're not training and then you're doing nothing. Right. You're, you're training to complement everything else. I think I was, that's why I was so, you know, privately annoyed by the kids. They just don't know. Yeah. They have no <laughs> idea, You dude. fucking little shit. Oh, you're, being, <laughs> you're being lazy. So fuck you. Yeah, that's what, I think that's it, what it probably it, that, is. That to me is from. like, like that is the most opposite of my character is like to make, to make excuse so being a victim or being lazy. Like yeah. those two things, like I, that like such a, but hey. then I had to question myself, well, why did that bother me so much? This fucking turd who I don't even know <laughs> made a comment to me well, like yeah, that. They just don't know all the other moving parts in your life. Yeah. You dude, know? that's, can I tell you right now? That's the that's my learning lesson right now is to not get annoyed with people that don't matter. Do you know how hard that is? It's it is so hard, hard bro. It, that was a reminder for me of a why again, why I want to because they don't matter. Move this, this guy. Yeah, no, I don't, even, I don't even remember the kid's handle or whatever like that. You know, but you know what I do remember? I do remember it had some like you know eat, sleep, repeat was this hashed and in his bio it was like <laughs> no days. I'm like, dude, you were the you were telling the epitome, me epitome. Like, yeah. yeah. No, you just haven't evolved yet, kid. You're still figuring it yeah. out right now. I mean, and I get it. I was there at one point too, yeah. where, yeah. where and you and I remember you giving Danny a hard time about this when you did the, when he did the whole like giving people your audience a hard time about making excuses for yeah, not yeah. having enough time in the day. Right. It's like you know, there's also this we we do we go through seasons in our life and our priority shift. The things that you just mentioned, like I'm actually enjoying and I love that. So there are times. Yeah. So how's your, let me ask you this: How's your quality of life? Now. Yeah, it's incredible right yeah. now. So I, w what else could you possibly ask for? I don't understand yeah. what people are, you know. Yeah. That's the key right there. Well, you know, what I think is, when you know, which is also what I love that what we're doing is I really, I you know, I, I really do mean that we're here to disrupt this space. Like, there's this, there is this idea around, you know, fitness people that they have to look a certain way and be all motivational. And I just That's think- That's the dysfunctional yeah, side. It's, it's, it's still well, immature. It's all of it, though. It yeah. I mean- the, This whole industry is immature. It, like, we're, they're not getting- any like wisdom and maturity trickling in it's like everybody wants to just listen, be drawn to this listen it's hard to sell the wisdom the maturity the balance it's hard to sell that it's easy to sell the other shit yeah, yeah. if we had listen if we lacked integrity 
and we weren't trainers for two decades. Let's say we just started Mind Pump, like let's make a ton of money and you know whatever. It, we can very easily sell shit with that that stupid li- those stupid lines. Very easily lose thirty pounds in thirty days. Take this magic pill. Here's a secret. You're a pussy if you don't work out every day. I could sell that very easily. It riles people up. It gets people excited. They buy your product. They disappear. You move on to the next customer. I'm not interested in that shit, man. I yeah. train people for too long to know that that's a that's a failing strategy. And I don't care. I don't care if that makes more money. It's and I and I knew that I was I was playing into that and using that with the whole competing thing at the beginning. I knew that I needed to get some attention, mm-hmm. right, to get a little bit of an audience so that I we had some sort of a platform yep. to tell the the whole I, story. I had no audience. Yeah, yeah, that was really that was the main, and I, but I couldn't. T- I can't tell you how excited I was to to like leave that. Like it was, it's not a lack of I don't have the discipline or whatever to do. It's just like no, nah, I don't want to live my life that way. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. does my my wife and my kid, my poor kid? I can't imagine if I did that. Like there's other parts in your <laughs> life that I think we we just we, Daddy, can you play with me? Uh, sorry, kids, gotta get my lift. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> you know? no. just, come on, dude. You so, can watch me train. I mean, we. I, I just think that there should be more of a conversation, especially in the. And I don't even know what category we fall in because I don't think we're the hippie wellness people. I don't think we're the fucking sports performance people. I also don't think we're the bodybuilding community. No, I just think there's something to take from all of those communities. And the the real secret sauce to I'd say we're the sexy smart people. That's a new category. <laughs> yeah, I, like, yeah, I, I like that. Day. I like that. Yeah. I can get. Yeah, and humble, sexy, balanced, <laughs> the most humble, <laughs> humble. the humblest I, podcast, the humblest. <laughs> it's too late. We already did an interview where we were all t- told we're narcissistic. So <laughs> <laughs> we can't come that's, out. And say that's that. an old podcast. <laughs> Don't bring it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, real quick, look. If you're a fitness fanatic, eat a lot of protein. You fuel your body. You might also struggle with digestive issues. This is a tough issue for a lot of people. Gut issues can cause inflammation, spike cortisol, make your insulin go all over the place. Basically, make it hard to get lean uh, and fit and to build muscle, right? So, how do you address this? Well, there's a lot of things you could do, but one thing you could do is utilize digestive enzymes designed for fitness people like you. Now, the company I like to work with uh, is Bioptimizers. Their mass enzymes are incredible. I love them. I take them when I eat a high protein meal, I digest it so well. It is now a staple in my daily use, okay? So, if you're interested in trying this out to see if it solves some of your digestive issues, Go to mindpumppartners.com, click on buy optimizers, and then the code is mindpump10, mindpump10 for a discount. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Sean from Maryland. What's up, Sean? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, Great to be with you. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Um, Well, I've listened to you guys for a while. I got um, MAPS Aesthetic back in 2019. Uh, Little background, I'm 41 years old. I was trying to lose weight after I went into a dressing room and saw, you know, the the pants were not fitting anymore. And so I one of my friends told me, cut it to 1,800 calories and you'll see it fall off. And I did, but I didn't like what I saw once all the weight fell off. So yeah. I, I found you guys. I started this process of building and, you know, cutting and cutting and massing, cutting and massing. So I got myself to the point where I've run MAPS Aesthetic multiple times. Um, I just finished a 12-week cut, went from 213 this week. I'll be down at 193. So I'm at a place where I just want to maintain from here on out. And running the type of volume that MAPS Aesthetic has towards in the phase three especially, um, and then going to maintenance, I wanted to run into performance, but I know you guys are usually going, you know, anabolic, performance, aesthetic. When you go lower the volume down and go to maintenance. I'm just worried that now the weight's going to start coming back on. And so I'm just that I want to talk through that progression of what that, no, what that, no. what that's like. You, you picking up what I'm throwing down? Yeah, no, you're good, bro. You're going to be fine, especially performance. Cause performance actually has got, uh, I mean, we have an addi- additional phase in there. There's an endurance phase. Uh, the exercises, a lot of them in there are so, uh, <clears throat> novel, like you're, you probably haven't done a lot of them. So yeah. it's going to be a new stimulus. So even if you are, in a slight calorie surplus to calorie burn ratio, uh, because there's even if there was a tiny bit less volume, it's going to be a new stimulus. You're going to build muscle from it. I think uh, I, I think you're in a great place right now. Yeah. Where's your calorie intake right now? Uh, you said before 1800, but it sounds like you you went up and yeah. So I went up when I started the cut back at the beginning of January. It was like at 22 to 24, and right now I'm at. Um, you know, on workout days, I'm getting about 1800 on the weekends when I'm resting, I'm cutting it down to about 14, which that's brutal. Um, so I'm happy to be done with that soon. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, I mean, to put it differently, uh, remember this, like, yes, exercise and activity burns calories, 
But that's actually the least, in, in, I guess, important part of exercise. What you really want to focus on are the adaptations. Because you're changing workouts, the adaptations are going to be quite fa favorable. So you're not going to get this like real negative effect from all of a sudden not burning as many calories as you were doing before. The, the you know performance is still a muscle building based program. They're all strength and resistance training uh, type programs. So I wouldn't worry about that. The second thing to consider is, and this is a fact, the amount of volume and training and frequency and intensity that's required to get the body to build muscle is far higher than what's required to maintain. Um, in fact, the last study that I read was something like one seventh uh, the volume uh, was required to maintain, which is quite a bit less. So you know, a lot yeah. of people worry about that, right? They do all this volume, they get to a particular point, they want to maintain. Like, oh my God, if I don't do this exact same thing I've been doing, um, I'm going to go backwards. And that's not true. I mean, I've been training for a long time and if I want to just maintain, the amount of volume I need to keep my body where it's at is so low compared to what it took to get it where it's at. So you're in actually a really good place and uh, I'm going to make a prediction here, uh, Sean. You're going to switch over to performance, bump your calories a little bit. You'll probably get a little leaner and build a little bit more muscle. Yeah. That's probably what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, your body's going to respond completely differently. It's such a different uh, pursuit in terms of a lot, a lot of exercise in there. People just haven't included a lot and uh, your muscles have to respond, you know, in different planes. And, you know, that's all just like, uh, you know, new territory for your body to, you know, build upon. And you're going to find that translates really well uh, towards your aesthetic goals. Yeah. You know, what's really cool about where you're at, Sean, is you could just now enjoy the workouts. Like forget, yeah. you, there's really no, don't worry about goals. Just enjoy the, the, the process and the journey. And what you'll find is that's going to get you, I mean, the side effect of that is going to be like incredible fitness and aesthetics and you're going to maintain, you're going to find yourself not swinging uh, like you might have before. So I would say now change the mentality, go into your workouts, and then just focus on the workout itself and enjoy the workout itself and enjoy the novelty and the difference in the exercises and how you're moving and how you're feeling and the performance aspect of it. Um, and then don't even pay attention necessarily to trying to hit a specific goal. Uh, but the side effect of that, which is the the irony of all that, is the, si the side effect is going to be you're going to probably improve your aesthetics uh, by doing that. That's great. That's I think that's one of the reasons I'm, to, I'm excited about with being 41 and just wanting to make sure I'm, I like the fact that there's mobility days in there. And um, I want that, that movement. And, and my, I grew up an athlete. And so I want, I actually like the way you guys have talked about performance. It's always made me want to, you know, want to try it out. So I got it. And um, yeah, pretty stoked to try, but that's, that's encouraging to hear. I think it's just, it messes with your mind when you're doing so much volume. So I appreciate you guys feeding back on totally that. Totally does, Sean. Yeah. And then I'm going to send you the intuitive nutrition guide to help you with the diet part, because oh, now that you're not looking at, you know, trying to uh, add or drop calories or necessarily count macros, you're kind of in this maintenance, you know, state of mind. Intuitive, uh, the intuitive eating guide will help you with that. It's a really nice place to live. This is where you kind of want to live most of the time uh, that you're, you know, you're exercising or whatnot. So we'll send that over to you. And I think that'll, that'll help you a little bit. Yeah. And if you're happy where your weight is at right now, this is a, this is a great time to kind of transition into not really calorie, calorie counting so much. I mean, my, my recommendation or transition for you right now at the stage you're at would be, well, let's keep an eye on protein still, because we want to make sure that we, we, we build some muscle into this new program and, and maintain the physique that you're, that you have or that you like. Uh, so let's watch that a little bit. But for the most part, as far as like how I would feed you is I'd, I'd really be asking you, like, how do you feel? Are you hungry? And if you notice that you're hungry from the new workouts, yeah. I would say, hey, let's eat. Let's eat. Let's yep. feed you. Just make good choices. You know, like I always say, don't eat like an asshole. Yeah. Uh, you know, eat, eat eat what your body needs. That's but, Adam's diet book. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to write that actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't be an asshole. <laughs> don't eat like an asshole. <laughs> yeah. So for optimal health. But you know, I think you know what I mean when I say that, right? So yeah, um, like, uh, yeah, because because okay. it's it actually there's a really good chance coming out of the, the low calories you are doing a program like performance, which is very different than aesthetic. Um, is going to uh, send a signal for your body to change, adapt, build muscle, and it's going to want probably more calories. And you're going to probably have this little hesitancy of like, ah, oh, that's great. I don't want to, I want to eat. I want to eat all the time. I, I got to hold back. I don't want to put on a bunch of fat. But <clears throat> man, if you're lifting and you're making good choices when you add the extra calories, uh, I, I'm going to tell you most of it's going to be muscle that's going to get yeah. put on your body. There's a lot and, of metabolic flexibility in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And would you say that's the same case, even like I'm, I'm, I'm going to Lebanon to work with Syrian refugees for a couple of weeks and like doing some different traveling. Um, so I have the anywhere and I have the suspension be the kind of the same thing for that. Right. Then come back and get into performance. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. Yeah, cool. yeah. And Hey man, Perfect. that's cool that you're doing that. Thanks. 
That's great. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. Well, thank you guys for all you do. It's, um, it's awesome to be on here with you. Um, love to see a concurrent training, um, program come eventually where someone who wants to learn, like integrate running and, and, uh, lifting more. <laughs> well, Sean, Stay tuned, Sean. Sean. This is going to be a good year for someone like you then. Yeah, <laughs> all right. away. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for calling in, man. <laughs> yep. All right. You guys have a good day. All Appreciate right. it. You know, Adam, one thing that you've said in the past that I really uh, think is important to focus on is rather than taking things away out of your diet, prioritizing and and adding things in your diet that are beneficial, with the side effect being you end up naturally reducing the things in your diet that maybe aren't so beneficial. So for example, you know, you always say kind of keep your eye on protein. I mean, to put it differently, it's like you, there's, a, there's a value ladder of foods and I would play, place protein at the top of it, quality protein from whole foods. So you're, when you're putting your meal together, that's the priority of the meal. What's the side effect of that? Lower appetite, uh, obviously the performance enhancing muscle building effects of the protein. You're probably going to eat less of other foods that maybe aren't so beneficial. The next thing I would probably look at would be uh, maybe fats and vegetables and then starches would be third just because uh, carbohydrates aren't essential. Um, and I think that's a great long-term approach. So it's not counting calories and macros. You just understand the value of foods and you 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 chase the higher value foods and then allow the lower value value foods kind of fall off uh, off the plate a little yeah bit. no it's definitely a, a a coaching hack or trick right to uh, <sighs> it's you're you're playing with the human psychology a little bit you're not telling a client they can't you know you can't do this you can't have that or yeah. restrict and hold back this it's like but what you've I've found for years of training, I know you guys have come to the same conclusion, is that if I get my client to just focus on that and not giving them crazy parameters, just say, hey, listen, just make sure every time you sit down, what's what's going through your head is make sure you're I'm getting good quality protein mm -hmm. and enjoy it and and have variety. You want some sausage every once in a while, fine. Have, want a good steak? Have a good steak. You want some chicken thighs? Have chicken thighs. Yeah. And, and But target that first. And you do, you end up filling up. And then what ends up happening is without you even trying to restrict from the starches and the other foods, you yep. just naturally do. I just think it's a much better strategy for most people uh, that aren't trying to you know, compete. It's a strategy that works in real life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our next caller is Chris from Australia. Chris, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. It's uh, really awesome to be on the show. I uh, said on the email, uh, it's awesome to uh, hear some people from outside of America on the call. And I've actually heard a couple people from the Philippines and Australia recently. So yeah, congratulations for uh, inviting other people on the show. Yeah, thank um, you. Yeah, so uh, I guess I'll just jump straight into it. And um, so I guess the key thing is I've been spent the last um, been working out for quite quite a few years, um, but over the last two years I've been doing a lot of I know you call it bro splits. So I've been doing uh, five to six times a five to six times a week, and I was doing some smaller forty five minute sessions and things like that. And that was I've been listening to all your talks around you you know going to the gym too much versus, you know, doing a, you know, doing your like MAPS anabolic sessions. And um, the only thing I would add to that is uh, like going every day was awesome after lockdown and getting back into it was fantastic. So I was going like five, six, seven, eight times a week and it really got me out of that lockdown mentality. But I started doing MAPS anabolic and I've been set, seeing awesome results doing MAPS anabolic. I've seen like significant improvements in terms of like my performance, in terms of the aesthetics, in terms of everything. And I'm loving it. And I'm loving the extra time that it's giving me in my day now doing MAPS anabolic. Um, you know, I've got two or three days a week where I can uh, spend some time with my girlfriend and things like that, which is really, really cool. Good deal. Um, but I guess the key thing is I'm planning to quit my job in the next six months and go traveling. Um, while I'm planning to travel, I'm planning to spend a lot of time surfing and snowboarding, things like that. And I'm just wondering, what what should I do in terms of a lead-in to a long time off? Like I'm planning on going on holiday for like a year or two years. And um, the main focus would be, well, as I get closer to quitting my job, I'm going to have a lot more free time. Um, you know, as I wind down from my job and all that type of stuff, I'll have more time and I you know, really enjoy hitting the gym. So but I don't want to go back to overdoing it again because I've been seeing such good results with uh, MAPS anabolic and cutting it down to two to three days a week. So, um, yeah, been really loving that. So that'd be, I guess that's my, you know, my first question is, is what would you recommend in terms of programming to get me into uh, or getting ready to go on a holiday? Um, Chris. Yeah, and I guess the 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, Chris, go, go. Chris, are you are when you do this? Uh, do you have any plans to still train at all, or is the plan to like just get in the best shape you can, and then you're going to be just snowboarding and surfing, uh, surfing and stuff? Yes. Yeah, so the plan is, I'm I'm going to try and do when I'm traveling. I, I like going running, uh, seeing new cities and things like that. But the plan is to be hardcore surfing and hardcore. Uh, snowboarding, like, you know, surfing two to three times a day in Indonesia for three wow. months and then, Sounds you know, uh, hitting Canada for the winter season and, you know, skiing, for, uh, you know, Damn, snowboarding. Bro, you, need a, you, need, you need a travel partner or what? I was thinking about leaving these, <laughs> I was thinking about leaving these knuckleheads anyways. Yeah. You know, you know what, Chris, uh, because you're going to be gone for so long, it really doesn't matter uh, what you lead into. Uh, right. The lead in would be like, well, I'm going to be off for three weeks, so I want to be able to jump back That's in. That's why I asked too if he was going to be training still yeah. too. So we're going to. Doesn't be really make a difference. I what I so just do what you're still doing that works. And then when you go on vacation, I would say if you want to work out a little bit while you're on vacation, mm-hmm. use Map Suspension because mm-hmm. you can do that anywhere. You just bring your suspension trainers, and it'll probably be a good addition to all the activity you're doing. Really not to not as your foundational kind of focus of your workouts, but rather just to prevent injury and maintain some strength. So you could perform when you're surfing or or skiing or snowboarding or doing whatever, but it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what you're, what you're leading into because you've been gone for so long. So whatever the, the, you know, the, the results that linger after your workout, it's not going to make a difference after about a month or two. So I would just say, just keep doing what you're doing, enjoy yourself. And then when you're gone, uh, if you want to add, you know, one or two days a week of, of some type of strength training, just to complement your, your current activities at the time, uh, I would say map suspension would be perfect. Well, he does have he. You do have six months, right? We have six months till this happens. So yeah, I, I've got I, I've got six months, and I'm going to have a lot more spare time. So as it, I get closer to winding down, I really want to get like to peak. Uh, so I would do this uh, then. I would do this. Uh, it, it sounds right. It, like what we do is kind kind of doesn't matter that much. But there's there's still enough time right now for you to s- slowly scale volume a little bit. You're having great results in anabolic, finish anabolic, go all the way through. Then I'd go to aesthetic and then I'd go to like strong, something like that, or split, you know, do, run them like that. That'll take you up until you travel and then do exactly what Sal said is I think suspension would be an amazing uh, tool to have because it fits in your duffel bag and you could tie it outside to a tree and don't make it a big deal. Just, hey, if one time a week. You yeah, can, especially with the amount of activity you're doing. Yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be, you're gonna stay in great shape because you're gonna be phys- physically active all the time. But you know, hey, if you had a if you have a down week or whatever, or weather isn't lining up for you to do one of your sports, so you know you go do the suspension trainer and don't make it a big deal if you, a week goes by and you don't. But when you do have the time to do it, you strap it up to something and do it. Yeah, if you're going for really increasing volume, like I would go with Adam's suggestion. I mean, if you're trying to reinforce too what you're doing in terms of surfing and, and snowboarding, I would recommend you throw performance in the mix. That's a good point. You know, right after and then get into aesthetic or split, you know, either one. So you could go that direction. But uh, yeah, you're pretty much open to uh, another two programs of ours. That's not a bad much. idea, Justin. Actually, I, I, you know, I could go, I'd change my answer after he brings up a good point because especially since you're going into sports like that. Maybe. I mean, just to minimize, because you know, well, yeah, when so, you get right into all that surfing, the risk of injury is a little higher as your body acclimates. Yeah. So that, so maybe this then, so maybe we go anabolic, aesthetic, and then performance. So you're, you're doing performance right before you, you take off on your trip. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I like that order a lot. And it, it, by the way, there's no wrong answer here. I think you're going to benefit. You're going to do great no matter what, but I think you're seeing great results from anabolic with that type of volume. Continue that. Uh, maps aesthetic is going to be more volume. So you're going to build even more muscle from that. And then performance is like a whole new adaptation that you're doing. So your body's going to probably build muscle on that, but it's more focused around mobility. And I think that like just to Justin's point is going to benefit the sports and the things you're doing. And then again, still I would have the suspension trainer. So I think that that would be kind of the, the perfect situation. Pretty much covered at that point. Yeah, Chris, yeah. when you travel like that, I had a friend that used to do that. He would just take off for six months to a year. He didn't really have like a structured plan. Are you? Is that like you? Or are you going out there and you have like a place? You do odd jobs and everything. Yeah. Do you know you where you're going to stay? Are you gonna, like, <laughs> do you like? Do you know where you're staying and what you're doing? Or are you just going to go there and figure it out? Um, yes, I'm. I'm a Kiwi, and this is kind of in our DNA to go and do this every uh, every five <laughs> or ten years. So uh, I know roughly what countries I'm going to hit at what times of the year to get the right seasons for the best waves and the best snow. Hmm. But in terms of you know 
ins and outs, no, no idea. I've been working really hard for the last few years. So, uh, you know, I'm just, just ready to take a holiday. And I guess the other thing I would say is that, um, you know, when I changed from doing, uh, you know, going to the gym almost every day to, down to doing uh, maps anabolic, I've definitely noticed that my performance in surfing is is increased massively because yeah. I'm not super fatigued all the time. You yeah. know, when I was hitting uh, post lockdown, I was hitting you know five six days in the gym, and um, and I was just so wrecked that I I had no stability. I yeah. had no. I, I was, you know, just had had the DOMs all the time. So I just, I could, my surfing was really suffering. So I'm noticing that MAPS Anabolic has definitely um, improved my surfing massively because I'm not constantly just ruined. Yeah, no, nice. that's a good point. It's and great like, you connected that. And like I said, when you're out there, um, you know, when you're out taking that time off and doing all that activity, like one day a week of, a, of like a suspension trainer resistance training would be ideal. That's it. Yeah. And you would get the same benefit. You'd feel, you'd feel the stability, the strength. And that's pretty much it. The biggest mistake people make, especially people who are really active, is they they throw a bunch of gym time on top of their activity, and then they don't they can't figure out why they're not feeling great when they're working out so much. It's just too much. Chris, you have any plans to make it to the West Coast uh, here, California? Uh, Canada. So I'll be in BC. That's the, okay. the plan is to go and hit BC. That's, um, or maybe also Revelstoke as well. So, um, a okay. little bit further in, but yeah, mainly Canada, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll definitely be hitting through, hitting through that way at some point. I haven't done, uh, uh, West coast, uh, sorry. Yeah, we got the uh, Mavericks over here near Justin, <laughs> right out Justin's neighborhood. It's a right fun out. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you get to surf with great white sharks. Go for it. <laughs> All right, Chris. Oh, so yeah, I've, I've, I've heard of Mavericks before. Yeah, for sure. Chris, I'm, I'm leaving Sandy Map suspension. Okay, I'm going to send that over to you, so you'll have that. Awesome. One more quick question as well. I I noticed you asked this, you answered this the other day for a couple of other guys, but. Why do I hate trigger sessions so much? <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> hate trigger sessions, and like yeah. I've tried every different trick you've you've suggested to everyone else. I've su I've tried yeah, going into a trigger session in in the gym. I've tried, you know, I've tried building them to my day. I'm doing them. I'm doing them, but I'm I'm struggling to get more than one or two in a day. It's just because it's because it's, it's not a them. it's not a full workout, you know. Yeah. So if you love working out, it's yeah, like it seems tedious. That's why. Yeah, it's like you. It's like you're. You know, it's, it's like a bit of a tease. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. You, your girlfriend, you know, kisses you a little bit and then leaves, and you're like, okay. So like, <laughs> yeah, like, but it's recuperative, man. So you got to just look at it completely differently. Like this is helping you to recover yeah. more effectively. The, the longer you'll do them, the more you'll start to appreciate it. But it's not a workout, so a, that's why. A good move and strategy yeah. is to attach it to something else you do really consistently. Okay, so if you have some sort of routine where you go for a walk at certain times, maybe you, uh, I don't know if you have an, an animal or a dog you walk, or you have a place from work where you Probably have to- a koala. If you, if you, if you, <laughs> you take your pet koala for yeah, a walk. <laughs> if you attach it, if you attach it to something it's else that you do consistently, uh, it'll help you with the consistency around the trigger sessions and don't get hung up so much on like, oh, this is the optimal time or, oh, this is, you know, exactly two hours apart each time I do it. Just attach it to something that you do consistently already. Uh, because it's only adding, and even if, so, one of the times, that, one of the things I started doing at one point with trigger sessions to be consistent because I struggled with the same thing was just it was part of me. One of one of the times would be right before I go to bed and right when I wake up. It's like first thing in the morning, brush my teeth, and I go over and do this little you know five to ten minute pump real quick to start my day, and then I would end it. And at least I was getting two times a day, and then I would always try and get the third. Like that was probably the most consistent I was with trigger sessions. Was just when I start my day, when I end my day, I was doing that uh, right be right before or or right when I wake up. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, Chris. Thanks. Thanks for All calling right, in, huh? Good luck. Have fun. All right, cheers, yeah. guys. Yeah. You got it, Justin. <laughs> well, 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 I don't think I don't think Australia. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't uh, enjoy that. Did one. you know that that koalas? Just off topic here. Did you know that they have this, like they have like a STD gonorrhea? Yeah, like crazy uh, I've heard with that. the koala. Can, uh, now can they, they can they give it to hum humans? I mean, I don't. I've never had sex with a koala. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm sure if you, if you bang tried. the koala, the least of your worries is gonorrhea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Justin, stop banging that koala. Gonorrhea. <laughs> well, what if it, I mean, what Put if on it, I mean, it's got serious claws. Like, what if it scratched you and it bled on you and you? And oh yeah. Dude. So yeah. So I, I mean, know, you, don't have, you don't actually have to have sex with the koala to actually get the gonorrhea from them. Then no, just foreplay. Would but I mean, do. there's not yeah. a lot of like. <laughs> 
Do I thought a lot of diseases <laughs> no don't go penny. don't go from uh, animal to human? Yeah, I think that one does though. I think so, yeah, uh, I think it's legit gonorrhea. Wow, the same kind. I know it's wow. kind of crazy. Is that yeah. where you got it from? No, oh. no, I was, <laughs> that's that's that was with right. the kangaroo. The other yeah, Australian it's animal. A kangaroo. You know what though? <clears throat> you know, you know, kind of what he's saying. Um, boy, that's a huge mistake. A lot of really active people. It's like they, man, I run, I cycle. I want to add some strength training. So they add in like four days of strength training to their routine. And then they're like, oh, it doesn't work for me. I end up feeling worse. It's the strength training's fault. No, it's not. You're just, it's just. Doing too much. You're just doing way too much. Yeah. You know, and you know, the irony is MAPS Anabolic is a pure muscle building, sagittal plane workout. And he's noticing improvements in his surfing. Yeah. yeah. Just to goes to show you. But that's that the reason why is just backing off the volume. Yeah. That's his He's just body stronger. Not being overtrained. Yeah. I actually think it's, I mean, kudos to him for having the self awareness to even connect the dots on that. Yep. A lot of people don't. You know, they would think it's something else, like, oh, or something magical in the workout. Yep, it's like, yep. no, it's just your volume. You were doing way too much. Our next caller is Marco from Ecuador. Marco, how can we help you? Hey, guys. First of all, thank you very much for everything you do. You may hear this a lot of times, but you truly change lives. I appreciate it. So my question is about uh, blood donations and workout. Uh, I'm a bit skeptical of all the information one can find on the internet, health-related. And when you look for blood donation, there's a long list of all the positives with very little negative. I would like to hear you guys about your experiences with this and how to prepare the days before and how to prepare for the days after a blood donation. Thank yeah, you. No, good question. Um, actually, not much. Uh, what you don't want to do is strenuous physical activity for 24 to 48 hours after, just because you may find you might get a little dizzy. Now, I'm going to be honest. So I just gave blood. I noticed no, none of those effects afterwards. Now I now, do. You do. I do. Yeah. So now, I, is it from the sight of the blood or the fact that you gave blood? I, I mean, I don't know, but yeah. I assume it's because it doesn't just. It's not just the moment after. It's the whole next day. I'm pretty. I'm pretty fatigued. Now, so did I you go, donate blood or just get a blood test? No, no, no. I've donated blood. Oh, before. okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, I yeah, just so recently people, did a blood test, but I've done where you give like you know, was it three, four vials? Yeah, worth, yeah, 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 yeah. And or that the bag or whatever. Yeah, and that you know, for the next twenty four hours, I'm just. I normally take the next day off. Yeah, my That's wife it. is like that. So she mm -hmm. she donated blood. And and then was felt really faint uh, the yeah. day after. I felt nothing, but I definitely wouldn't recommend working out right afterwards. Now, yeah. leading into blood donation, I mean, it's all the stuff that they ask you not to do. Drugs, unprotected sex, you know, the whole deal, right? So you want to make sure your blood is, is clean so that they, although they test it, you definitely want to give clean blood. As far as the benefits are concerned, most of the benefits with donating blood, besides the psychological benefits, right? Because you feel good, you're helping people, that type of stuff. The physiological benefits, many of which, or most of which, apply to men. Uh, men don't obviously bleed regularly like women do. Um, and we can often build up kind of toxic or dangerous levels of iron in our blood. Or even if it's not toxic or, uh, or too dangerous, just higher levels of iron can cause increased risks of heart disease and blood clots and, and cancers and stuff like that. So they find that men that give blood at least once a year have like a significant reduction um, in some of those things. So, so, and that's pretty much it. But the day after, I would say I wouldn't work out for 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, just to be safe. Yeah, just to be safe. Cause you, what you don't want to do is, you know, pass out, right? You want to do squats and then find yourself passing out. But after that, totally fine. I, I gave blood personally. I worked out, uh, about, about maybe the, maybe two days later, I felt zero negative effects. Um, but I'm glad you're doing this. You know, there's a huge mm. blood shortage going on right now, especially after the pandemic. A lot of people stopped donating blood. Um, and they're in this this massive shortage, and it's a big deal because we have yet to create synthetic blood that we can give uh, to people. So good on you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks for calling in, Marco. Thank you for everything you do. Appreciate it. Right. Yeah, you know, I got called back by the, the Red Cross because I donated. And all the STDs. Yeah, well. yeah and they said... You can't this take is, this. This is crazy. Yeah. Too much, no, they, too much math in this one. Been hanging out with koalas too they much. Said, they said, <laughs> yeah. they said, they said you got a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of weird supplements in your blood. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Why yeah. is it yellow, glowing? No, they, they, I got, I'm O positive, so I'm a, I'm a universal donor. So they called me up right away and said, hey, can you come back in and we'll put you on a regular schedule because of whatever. I said, yeah, absolutely. But 
the the health benefits are what got me interested that uh, for men in particular and if that motivates people to give blood that's great i know it kind of did for, for me men, so yeah in terms of yeah with with iron but also too just the amount of blood cells like uh, yep. i guess that uh, you know sometimes we could get to a point where we produce too many blood cells and it actually has a, an adverse like thickening effect like a thickening effect yeah so yeah. um yeah i'm i'm due so this this is one of those things i'm like yeah I think I should schedule one here. Bodybuilders have been doing this for uh, quite a while. Yeah, now they do it for different reasons, right? Because yeah. when they're on high doses of uh, anabolic steroids, it makes your body produce more red blood cells. Your, your hemato hematocrete goes up too high. So one way to, to regulate that, an easy way is to give blood. Yeah. So I know that they do that. But. Yeah, no, that's actually what let, I mean, I, when I was taking all kinds of testosterone, that was one of the reasons why I did that to yeah. get down there. But And I would do it more consistently if I didn't feel that way. I feel that way every time. So it's it's been a handful mm -hmm. of times now that I've done it, and every time I've, I feel kind of- You would make a good, yeah. a good warrior. And back also, it gets rid of all the demons. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> that's, 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 that's the main reason. That's this was 5,000 years ago. Adam yeah. would, Adam would be a medieval doctor told me. <laughs> on, the, on the battlefield. Imagine he gets a cut. Oh, God. I'd be extra motivated not to die, bro. That's <laughs> Don't want to get cut. I'm mean, no, just, just kidding. No infections. No, you know what? I tell you what, dude. People are always, uh, well, I don't know if people are always doing this, but I know I was always thinking, how can I help? What can I do? Can I donate money? What can I? What an easy, very effective, direct way of helping people. You know, sometimes you give a random person money on the street. Yep. You don't know what they're doing with it. You give blood, just it's going to be used. Give them a nice, you know, bag of blood. Yeah, for, for a good purpose. Go. Uh, unless it's, you know, weird celebrities using it to, to be young. You know what I mean, Justin? Our next caller is Brian from Minnesota. Brian, what's happening? How can we help you? Yeah, thanks for taking uh, my call, guys. I really it. appreciate this. Um, just a little background for you. So I am uh, 41 years old. I'm a single dad. I find it best to work out in the mornings with my schedule. So I work out between normally 5.30 to call it 7.30 in the morning. And I find that helps uh, keep me consistent. So I started lifting weights about 18 months ago after years of doing nothing but running. And uh, really thought running is how I'd get my results. And uh, after I realized of running three to five miles a day, and uh, I was at my heaviest, 245 pounds, that uh, something needed to change. My blood work was kind of a mess. And uh, I came across you guys. And I think the best thing that happened was my treadmill broke. And <laughs> so uh, I bought a pair of adjustable dumbbells, committed to just doing 10 minutes a day. Um, and uh, because I, I tend to, when I get after things, I really get after it and then can either cause injury or get frustrated and kind of move on. So started listening to you guys, kind of went more with a split style, was seeing some results, but then kind of hit plateau. So decided to go in on what you guys were saying and switched over. And so uh, lost my job actually in October, uh, which led to having a little time on my hands. So I bought Anabolic and got a gym membership, started tracking macros, really got great results. So after that, I went into uh, doing aesthetics. And really during about that last week of aesthetics, um, I had uh, started noticing getting some pain um, that I hadn't experienced before, a little bit in the neck, back, just kind of all over. And I felt like my body was really pushing it. And I was getting to the point where, you know, I, I needed to do something a little different. So my question for you guys is, is where would I go next? I did finish aesthetics. I saw terrific results. I'm down to 200 pounds, got my body fat tested. Um, I, I'm really proud of where I got to because of uh, your guys' programs, but just feel like I need to train maybe in a little different plane, a little different program. And so where would you guys suggest I go next? Yeah, you, Bri you're, you're, Brian, by the way, aesthetic is a lot of volume. So, And I want people to know this. It's a lot of volume and for some people, it's too much, okay? I'd say probably, of all the people that buy it, a good 30 to 40% of the people, probably it's a little too much volume for them. So that's why you started kind of feeling that pain. Now, to answer your question, math performance, uh, hands down, would be the perfect program. Oh, this is a this is such a, a your, your story is a perfect example of, and and I know we, we probably don't do this enough. Um, we used to early on, uh, and we should revisit communicating this more but when we wrote the programs the, the the ideal way to follow them is maps anabolic maps performance and then maps aesthetic for the exact reason you're experiencing right now mm -hmm. is <laughs> it, after doing the anabolic training with that which is very heavy heavily focused in the sagittal plane uh jumping into aesthetic which is also heavily focused in the sagittal plane and increasing volume 
tends to do this, especially for us guys that are you know older than 30 years old. You're 20-something, maybe you don't realize it or recognize it too much, but as we get older, this stuff really starts to to show up. And mm-hmm. had you gone to performance first, I think that you would you would eliminate it, what you feel right yeah, now. Yeah, you're really pressuring the hinges at that point, right? So you've, you've put sure. in a lot of work there and anabolic and then added volume on top of that style of training. So you're going to do your body a, a whole bunch of good going through performance and going through the movements and reinforcing the joints and mm-hmm. gaining stability and also to building muscle. So it's, you know, misconception is that you're going through performance to kind of, you know, just go through the mobility sessions and get better with, uh, you know, the movement side of it, but really you're building muscle the entire time as well. So I think it's going to be a great follow up. Yeah, we'll send over mass performance to you, Brian, if you don't have it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I really appreciate that. And you're right on there, Just That's kind of why I skipped that one was for the first time I saw such good results in muscle definition and stuff. I thought, oh, I'm I'm not going to do performance. I'm jumping right to aesthetics. I I need to keep (laughs) this. You're not alone, brother. Here's here's the lesson for you, Brian, okay? Because you actually did it. You actually kind of learned this lesson a little bit and then kind of forgot it. The lesson is to listen to what we say because we know we're talking about it. <laughs> it's a true story. Listen, we say anabolic performance, okay? So, and I know you're like, oh, I want to go aesthetic because I want to keep pushing things. Just, I promise you, Brian, we've been doing this for a long ass time, yeah. decades. Uh, we're only, we're, we, we communicate as trainers. We're not just trying to sell shit or whatever. That's the truth. So, MAPS performance, do that all the way. Um, you'll love the way it makes you look and feel. 100. You'll feel better with MAPS performance than you did even with MAPS uh, anabolic. That's that's 100% true. Sure. Right. And to that point, I have uh, really bought in to what you guys preach and, uh, uh, or what you say. And uh, at just one quick second is, you know, my way to say thanks to you guys is I, ho- I hope others hear this, is what makes you guys really different is uh, in business, in life, you can really fake caring about results, you know, especially if it's driven to make money. But what you can't fake is caring about people and getting a message out. And you guys couldn't fake it as long as you have. So you know you guys actually care. I appreciate so I have bought into what you guys do. And it's, it's kind of funny. My girlfriend has actually uh, joined in also. And uh, I've helped her actually get back into doing some weightlifting now and some stuff with diet and other stuff. So it's uh, it's awesome what you guys do. And uh, really appreciate what you guys do. Uh, oh, thanks a whole thank lot, Brian. You, Brian how, many kids a lot. You, how many kids do you have, by the way? Uh, I just have one daughter. Uh, good for you, but, man. Uh, she's yeah. uh, she's ten now and getting more and more active, and that's what hurt is when she was eight, and uh, I wasn't keeping up with her at all, mm. and I was like, something needs to change because I'm running three to five miles a day, oh, wow. and I can't keep up with her. Hey, Brian, I'm gonna send you map suspension too if you ever if your daughter shows any interest in doing any exercises with dad. That's a great great thing yeah, for it's a kid. A great to do. introduction. So I'll send you okay. that too. Okay. That's awesome because she will every once in a while, like uh, on like trigger days or something, you know, at home, uh, she will jump in and maybe she just does obviously like body weight or yeah, something like that. But she deal. will jump in every once in a while. That's oh, good great. deal. Yeah. So we'll send you maps performance and map suspension. That's awesome. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Brian. Thank appreciate you got it, Brian. All right. Thanks. You got it. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I get the whole, I get the allure, right? Uh, wanting to go in a particular direction, thinking you're going to maybe respond a little different, but. Yeah, and look, I, I'm going to be honest. If I was Brian, I would have done the same thing. 100, percent I get it. Well, the results come on, and it's it's addictive. Yeah. You know, it's like, wow, yeah. look at my body changing and transforming. And so, yeah, it's just it's a little bit different uh, mindset uh, to also now think more long term about your training. Yeah, and and people just they're always pleasantly surprised. They'll they'll do a program. They think, all right, you know, they tell me I should do this, but I want to do this, but I'll do what they tell me. And then, you know, a month or two later, they're like, oh, crap, this is exactly what I needed. Yeah, you know, every time we this comes up, I actually I always do have a mental note that I never follow through on it, which is... You should probably you, write it down. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe get Doug to do it here. I, we, we really should uh, highlight that somewhere on the website because we think because we've said it 30 times... Like the perfect order. ...on the show, yeah. and why. You know what I'm saying? Like why, yeah. why, why you go this direction, and not that you can't do it other ways. It's that we wrote it with this intent for these reasons, and because this is a perfect example of why you want to follow it in the order that we say, regardless kind of what your goal is. Even if your goal is to build the maximum amount of muscle, people don't realize that you are going to do that by going through the, the performance uh, program second. So... We ought to put it in the uh, on the website somewhere where we can explain yeah, that because that's a good idea. You know, there's a good chance that somebody listened to 500 episodes, but they've never heard us say that before. Yep. So 
Yep, good deal. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal, and they're all free. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can only find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal.